I'm going to show you, first of all, how to make a square out of a rectangle, just in case you're not quite sure. I have regular copy paper here. The thing with these squares is they can be any size and they just need to be sort of square. I'm going to use one piece at a time so you can see it more easily. You can fold it up like this to make a triangle. And then you fold this part and we'll be tearing that off. When I fold it up here, I line it up on this side so that I know I've got a right angle. I don't explain it like this to the children, but I do really want them to do this kind of thing without measuring. Now I'm uh, using my nail along here to make that cut nice and easy or the tear. I'm going to start here. It's much easier here than there. And I'm just going to tear this end off. And I'm really not going to worry if this is even or not. In fact, I might purposely make it uneven because we're going to wind up cutting this bit off. So now you have um, a triangle. We're going to fold it again and make a, a smaller triangle, half size, like this. Now, these creases are um, handy, as exact as you can be, but again, it's not crucial actually in this. And it's a nice habit when you're making a crease to use something, if you have a bone folder or something, if you've ever done um, any book binding, they're wonderful tools. But if you haven't, you would use the handle of a pair of scissors, something hard-ish, but not sharp. And I'm going to just re-crease that crease. And here's a tip. Um, to make it flat later, which is what we're going to want, you can um, fold it one way and then fold it the opposite way and make that crease just as uh, clear and clean. Not necessary, but it really does help. So I started with a square, I folded it in half, I folded it in half again. I'm going to make one more fold in half again. So here's the point where all the folds meet. And I'm going to fold it over like this. And I'm going to do the same thing because this is a thicker fold. So I'm definitely going to um, flatten that out nicely. And I'm going to fold it the other way as well. Um, when you crease it, crease from the center out. We'll be using some of these skills on Thursday when we make a little journal together. Very simple one again. I'm going to fold this in the opposite direction. I'm going to line up the edges, check the, the point is a point-ish because it's about eight thicknesses. Finger press and then press with something hard from the inside out. Now, this is done in a lot of different uh, things that you might do with the children, this kind of folding. And what I like about this particular project is that with very simple directions, you can then kind of set the children free. And you will see things that nobody's ever seen before. I kind of like that open-ended project. There are some rules, and I will tell you those now. So if you look at what you have, you've got um, a triangle. You've got all the folds meeting at one side, one point, and you've got the cut ends meeting at the other sort of end of the triangle. And those, it's going to be important to remember. You've got at the point, folds are here, cut ends are here. We're going to draw a series of train tracks. We're going to start with simple train tracks, two train tracks that crisscross. And what I mean by train tracks are parallel lines. You would probably want to use um, a soft pencil where you won't see the lines. I'm going to use actually a Sharpie so that you can see more easily on camera. But something like a mechanical pencil is nice for adults or just a plain, you know, thick, soft pencil for children with an eraser. You probably need an eraser. So here are the, the rules that you have to remember. Um, this is the point. Train tracks are going to go from the fold to the fold, that's one rule. So fold to fold, not fold to cut ends. And they're going to cross each other. So here's one train track. It can be a curve, it can be a straight line, anything you want, but make sure that you're going to be able to crisscross it. So if you put it here, for example, you're not going to be able to crisscross easily. And I'm going to make it fairly parallel, as parallel as, parallel as I can with my Naked eye on camera with 100 people watching. 
There we go. And now I'm going to crisscross it. And I think I might do straight lines. Again, straight, curved, doesn't matter. But what are the rules? Two rules, think about them yourself first. What are the two rules? Fold to fold and crisscross. And for younger children, you might have them like draw the width of their finger just so they sort of get the idea because this kind of idea is tricky to get the idea of a parallel line. I would do this maybe at the end of third grade, uh, fourth grade, or the more complicated ones that I'll talk about or show you later um, can be really any age, actually. I'll show you some examples that my grandsons of various ages have done too. So now we've got fold to fold, crisscrossing lines, point is there. Now we're going to cut everything else out except the train tracks. So if it helps, you or children, just shade that bit in that you're going to cut out. And that often does help, actually. So let's do that together. I'm going to cut along the train tracks. If you're very finicky, you'll want to cut just inside the train tracks so you don't see the pencil marks. Otherwise, we're not, just not going to worry about it. You can also do this, of course, with scrap paper of any size. It's a great activity for practicing scissor work. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of those skills, isn't it, that somehow kids don't have as much now as they used to when I started teaching. Straight and curved lines. I'm going to just throw these bits out for now. So if we're all at roughly the same stage, which I'm kind of hoping we are, we have something in front of us that... Now, for the older children, you could begin to ask them, well, how do you think this is going to look? Because we're going to open it out. And you might think yourself, well, how is this going to look? So we're trying to imagine something that we've never seen before, actually. Or we're trying to imagine geometrically how this is going to work. Okay, I'm guessing some of you have that in your minds already. I'm going to open it and it's easiest to flatten as you open, but you don't have to. Here we go, and this is my pattern. I'm going to kind of flatten that this here. And now we're going to color it. And this is the fun part too, the sort of fourth grade relationship. You can probably see that this is going to make a woven pattern. So what I do, I'll use a pencil, is I trace around and I go, here, this is going to be blue. And I just put a line over there, under here. So I'm going to stop here. I went under there. I'm going to go over there, under there, over the next one. And you will see some children, and some of you probably also see it, that they see the pattern that like the, the right leg here, you go over, the left leg is going under. And it's just interesting to see, again, in kind of the way Sven talked about yesterday, it's interesting to see how children approach these things. This is a little more formed than what he was talking about but still um, watching them work so you, giving simple instructions and then letting them sort of have at it is kind of key because then also the children who are um, fast and comfortable can improvise on this and this is a very short time to show you this but I will show you this um, as you improvise on this you can do more than two lines I've found on this size of copy paper that I can do up to about five lines, actually, that crisscross. It gets a little tricky, 
and my lines aren't always exactly parallel, but I'm going to invite you to just try that out and see how that works for you. And of course, in the sort of tradition of under and over, if you're going over, it's sort of a solidish color. If you're going under, you might want to shade it a little more so it looks like um, there's a, a bridge here and underneath there is kind of a moist, wet area where there's more shade that hits the ground. So I'm going to leave you to color yours as you choose, but I want to show you a couple of examples of other things that come out. And I would, then I would like to see perhaps if you could, um, once I switch back to gallery, I'd love to see what yours have come out like. It's one of these, um, I don't know, I just love doing it. So I offer that to you. Here are some examples that my, um, I and my grandsons have made. There's quite a few, so I'm going to go through them fairly fast. But I think you'll see all of the different kinds of varieties of patterns that can be made. And I think this is a pretty fair introduction to the fourth grade work that they might do of drawing the lines and imagining the lines themselves. Little ones. Oh, sorry, I'll turn my phone off in a moment. And it's this interplay of um, straight and curved. See, more advanced students can be asked to use a, no oh dear, I'm so sorry, a smaller square. These aren't colored, some of these aren't colored. Oh dear, <laughs> so sorry about the phone. It's buried under the pile of um, things here. Yeah, so just ideas for you to play with. Last couple. This is one of the simpler ones as well with straightish lines and curvedish lines. 